everyone, welcome back. My name is Andrea. I am the Knitting PT here on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, well, I guess here on YouTube and on Instagram. I should have flipped that around. Um, I do make or self-care tips on Instagram. I have not been good about uploading them to YouTube recently. And the longer I put it off, the more of a backlog there is. But I promise I will get to it soon. Um, and each of my episodes here always end with a wellness tip for fellow knitters, crafters, um, that kind of thing. Um, before we get started into the typical uh, format where I talk about my FOs, my whips, and my acquisitions, I have some, I guess, like housekeeping or announcements. Um, so first of all is that I am teaching a class on the Making app. If you don't know what that is, it is an app made by the Making um, magazine. Um, and it is called Making Co, I think it is. You can find it on the App Store or on the Google Play Store. Um, but it's kind of a alternative to using Instagram, if you will. Um, and it's still, you know, fairly new. It's been around, I think, I don't know how long it's been around actually, maybe close to a year. I only joined it maybe three or four months ago. Um, but what is really neat is that you can attend classes through the app. And I am teaching one this coming Saturday um, on June 4th. I think it's June 4th, this Saturday. It's at 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. Um, what is kind of nice about it is that if you're unable to make it live, the whole session is recorded and you have access to it for free forever on your account. Well, not for free, you have to pay for the class. The class is $50 um, and it's for a full hour and it is about posture and ergonomics for crafters. Um, so I'd love to see you there if you wanna join. Um, again, you have to join through the app. So if you don't have the app yet, make sure you download it, create your account, and then you can look through the classes. And my classes is near the top because it is coming up soon. Um, so I hope to see some of you there. I'm hoping to teach this class um, several times through the app. Um, so if you're unable to make it this time, maybe you can catch me another time. The second announcement is that I am doing a lecture for Vogue Knitting Live in August. So in August, Vogue Knitting Live is having an in-person marketplace and there will be classes and I have been invited to teach a lecture also on posture, posture and ergonomics for uh, knitters. It's more specific this time. Um, and so it is in New York City. It is the first weekend of August and my lecture will be on August 5th, which is a Friday at, I think it's 10.30 in the morning. And it is at, I think it's the Marriott Hotel in Times Square. Um, but you can go to Vogue Knitting Live's website to register and get the details. Um, again, if you are local or if you were planning on going anyway, I'd love to see you there too. Um, I believe the lecture has a maximum capacity of 100 people. Um, so either way, those are two ways you can check out more of my content and learn more. Um, and I will put links to everything in the description box below, along with links to dyer designers, uh, makers that I talk about in the episode too. All right, so let's get into it. I have not filmed in a month. Well, so that's not true. I filmed my Monet wrap up episode, I think two and a half to three weeks ago, but I have not filmed a regular episode in at least a month. It's been a while. And I didn't plan for there to be such a long gap, but just a lot of things were happening in the interim. My son got sick, so he was home for a week. And then my daughter has had an extended Memorial Day weekend because they tacked on some extra days from the snow days that they, did, that they didn't use this year. Um, so just life has been really busy. I haven't been able to sit down and podcast, but I'm really glad to be back at it now. Um, so I have a lot of things to show you. So this may be a longer episode than usual, so feel free to break it up when you watch it. But either way, buckle in, um, maybe grab something to drink, grab a whip to work on. Um, I have my coffee here. And let's get started. Okay, so I have four FOs to show you. I am a little amazed at how much I finished. And like, okay, so like, I feel like it's cheating a little to say I have four FOs because one of them is a old whip that really didn't have much left to do on it. So it's this one. This is the Willa T by uh, Annie Haas. She's this bird knits. And if you have been watching my um, YouTube channel since last year, you'll remember I started working on this last summer. So this yarn is Craft Me Not Yarn Co. And this is in her merino linen base. So it's 90% merino, 10% linen. And this is the colorway Cafe. And let me stand up so you can see it. It has a wonderful drape to it from that linen. It's very cool and soft. Um, yeah, 
I just, I really love it. So um, I started working on it. I think I got to about like here before all my other test knits and everything else took over. And then I just didn't work on it for a while. Um, but then I picked it back up out of its project bag a few weeks ago and decided to just get it done. Um, and I really didn't have much left because, you know, it's a short sleeve tee. I just had to do a few more inches on the body. It is a large gauge. This, um, I used US six needles for this and this is a fingering weight. So it's a very airy gauge, um, but I love it. I super love it. Um, I definitely want to make another one of these. It's a such a lovely drape to it. It's such a simple tee, but it's so elegant looking and it's with a larger gauge, it's quite airy too for summer. Um, and I also really like this merino linen base from Sarah of Craft Me Not Yarn Co. Um, I wasn't, you know, this was one of those where I picked up this yarn to try for a more plant-based fiber. Um, and I really like it. Um, it's softened a lot. You know, I've worn it a few times since I finished it. And it's definitely even softened. When I first finished it and after I blocked it, when I put it on, I could still feel like a slight prickle from the linen. But the prickle is definitely much reduced now. I, you know, again, I've worn it several times since. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Um, so I think whenever Sarah brings this base back to her shop and when she's back from kind of her maternity leave and dying more regularly, I encourage you to check out this merino linen base from her if you're looking for uh, more plant-based fibers especially if you live in a hot climate yeah so that's the first one the second one i finished was my poetry pullover by sorry nordland this was a test knit i did for her here it is this is in camellia fiber company in the sport base and the colorway is moonflower um so several things about this if you've kind of like seen on my Instagram and from when I wore it, it definitely has a little bit less ease than I planned for. So I knit size, the size that was 39 inches for five inches of positive ease. Um, it came out that when I wear it, I maybe have an inch or two of positive ease, not much. Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments about how it looks on me and and it's definitely, it's not tight fitting, but it's definitely, you know, form fitting. Um, and I have definitely been shying away from form fitting clothes in the past three years, pretty much ever since I had my son. Um, after I had my son, I did gain a lot of weight with him. And it's just, you know, your body changes when you go through pregnancy and through giving birth. And after my second child, um, I found that my body changed even more than when I had my first child. And so um, I've been in this really personal journey of trying to learn to love my new body and the way it looks and embracing the changes that have happened. Um, while, while at the same time, I am currently trying to work out consistently and that is more so just to be healthy as well. Um, not necessarily to lose weight because I don't want to look at it as I'm losing weight so that I can look better. I'm trying to, my approach to it is I want to be healthier and more fit so that I can be more active um, and play with my kids a lot and um, just be strong um, and model, you know, good, healthy, active behavior for them too. Um, so yeah, and so I'm not, I, I'm not planning on like, you know, being like, you know, I'm gonna look a certain way when I'm, my, my, how do I say this? I'm not trying to achieve a certain look, if that makes sense. I'm trying to achieve feeling strong and healthy. And so, but I have been shying away from wearing more form-fitting clothes um, because I am self-conscious of that like kind of mom pouch that some people get or a lot of people get, I don't know. Um, but yeah, and so this is a little more form-fitting than I was planning for it. Um, but so many people have reached out and told me that it looks really lovely on me. Um, and so, I am going to embrace it too. I mean, you know, high-waisted pants and skirts are definitely my friend right now too. Um, so yeah, anyway, I digress. That was a really long tangent. And so I really love how it came out though. I definitely want to make another version eventually that has much more ease. I think what happened was that something, I think it has to do with my yarn choice. Because if you look at the hashtag and you look at all the other testers' photos, they had the positive ease look that I think sorry was going for and that I was looking to achieve, but mine did not have that. And I think it has to do with my yarn choice. So I use sport weight yarn and I did get gauge, um, but I think because I use sport weight yarn, 
it just um, something happened with just the form of the sweater where it's just um, it's just more form-fitting everyone else used kind of DK weight yarn or they use like fingering held with mohair um, and I think next time I would probably use DK weight maybe try to find a lighter DK um, because I think that helped kind of achieve that more boxy look too. Um, I talked to some of my friends who use mohair quite often and they did say that when you hold fingering and mohair together that it does block out and bloom much more than just like a single strain of sport weight yarn does. Um, so that might have been what happened for me. Um, but yeah, and so I was playing yarn chicken the entire time with this sweater. So as you can see, I did kind of like three quarters length sleeves instead. Um, it was pretty down to wire. I was like constantly weighing my remaining ball of yarn to see how far I could go before I had to bind off and have enough for the other sleeve too. But I really liked the way it looked. Um, and I am just really proud of this finish. You know, this is an all over lace and this is my second all over lace pullover. I did make that Clotilde sweater, um, like several months ago, but that was like bulky weight yarn. This is sport weight yarn and it was on US, I think it was US four needles yeah and so it was quite a feat um but you know it is i hope that if you want to try it out you know definitely i think give this pattern a try um it is a very intuitive um lace to knit um i did have to look at the pattern but i could tell if you know i was off or not off that kind of thing um but yeah so that's my discombobulated thoughts on that my last FO I got done was my Cozy Classic Raglan, the striped version. This is a pattern by Jessie May, and this yarn is all Explore Knits. So this top is Nightfall, Linen, Daybreak, and then To the Stars Who Listen. And I love it. Um, I just kind of knit. I decided I wanted about like five inch wide stripes, and that was just based on me measuring um, to see how long I wanted the entire sweater to be. I didn't want to repeat colors on the body, so I just figured that out. And then for the sleeves, I did knit the sleeves a little bit longer, like they're probably close to five and a half to six inches. And part of that was I just wanted to maximize the, the my yarn usage. Um, so I'll show you how much yarn I had, I have left. So I start out with four balls of worsted weight yarn, and this is how much I have left, like this is it. <laughs> I didn't even weigh them yet, but you can see I have the most left of Nightfall. And the other ones are literally just like maybe a few grams. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy that I used so much of the yarn. And I did repeat the Nightfall at the end for the cuffs because I needed more. Yeah. So yes, this is Worsted Way. Um, I did do some modifications on that because the pattern is written for DK weight yarn and I use worsted. So what I did was I went up a needle size to a size eight needles. I knit the small size. And so the other cozy classic raglan I made was also the small size. I did use DK weight yarn. And I remember when I was done with it that I thought if I knit another one, I want a little bit more ease. Um, so this time what I did was because I was going up a needle size, um, and so my gauge would be a little bit larger. So I just stayed with the same, um, I knit the same size, same number of stitches, but because it was a needle size up, it did result in a little bit more ease. Yeah, but yeah, I really love it. I haven't taken any photos in it because it is really warm now. Um, I'm thinking I might maybe save taking photos of it for the fall because it is a very fall sweater, you know, it's worsted weight. Um, I was hoping to have it done sooner, but that did not happen, which is okay. But now I can look forward to wearing this in the fall. All right, so that is it for FOs. Oh boy, this is definitely going to be a long podcast episode. Sorry, I'm sweating right now. Um, so in terms of whips, right now I have since cast on and started a test knit for Tiff Nealon. And this is the, and now I've forgotten the name of the pattern, <laughs> Onward and Upward. It's called the Onward and Upward Tee. So here it is. It is a boat neck shaped. And you can see it has some garter rib eyelid details here. It is a tee, so there, um, there won't be sleeves, but you know, you will pick up to finish for the armholes. 
and then um, it ends with a chevron lace detail on the bottom. So I'm actually in the middle of trying to decide how long I want to make mine. Um, she goes instructions for either standard length or crop length. And I'm not sure which length to go for because it has that chevron lace detail on the bottom. I know if I make it too long, it can look kind of strange on my body. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of following the pattern and knitting until I hit a point where, you know, I think that, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of going with it. I might end up at a length in between cropped and standard. So we'll see. Um, for the lace detail, you use a contrast color. So this is sport weight. It calls for sport weight on the body and then fingering weight on the chevron lace detail on the bottom. So this is Camellia Fiber Company in their sport weight and this is a colorway clay. This is part of their, I think it was their spring, spring colorway from last year, I think. It's this beautiful kind of clay pink. <laughs> Yeah. And then for contrast, I actually haven't decided what to use yet, but I have two options. And if you would like, tell me in the comments below what you would pick. So I have either some hedgehog fibers, and this is in their colorway teacup. It's this creamy off creamy with pink speckles. Or I have this melon tosh. And I think this is Fair Isle, but I don't remember. It was from it's, you know, these are obviously left over from other projects. So I'm going to hold these with the, put this together and you can tell me what you think. Oh boy. Okay. So either with this at the end or this at the end. I'm actually leaning towards this one, I think, just because I think this white, the white base in this is a little bit too too white, if anything, and the tone of this off cream kind of goes better with this clay. I don't know. You can let me know what you think. Um, oh, and the stitch markers I'm using on this project are new as well. They're from Denim, Denim and Rain, Sarah. And if you know, I love her work. And so she recently had a shop update where she had these super cute stitch sheep stitch markers. Look how cute this is. Focus. Yeah, look how beautiful that is. And then there's a sheep, and then they come with accent stitch markers too. I hope you can see it. Yeah. But yeah, super cute. I really love these. Yeah, that sheep is so freaking cute. I'm going to give you another look just because... It deserves it. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. All right. Um, my other whip is my long-standing whip, the Jones cardigan for my dad. I have made progress on it. I'm still on the body. I've got about five inches left before I can separate for, um, I guess, sleeve separation and the front and the backs. But here it is so far. It looks really nice. Um, yeah, it's going to be so worth the end result. It definitely will. And this is a Madeline Tosh stovepipe in their DK base. Yeah. And I just cast on the other day for a new test knit for Amy Sure. And this is for the coloring book T. Um, and so far, I don't have a lot done of it yet but I wanted to show you how it's looking so far knit up like this come on focus there we go so the yarn I'm using is Tolte Mata I'm probably saying that right my French is very rusty, rusty Tolte Mata and this is their 5050 merino cotton base and this colorway is called Amazuka but yeah Look how pretty that is. Let me show you it in the cake. This delicate, kind of icy blue with all these speckles throughout. Yeah. And so for the coloring book tea test, I'm doing um, view A, which is a cropped short sleeve tee, but it has some contrast at the ribbing on the 
think it's the collar and the hems both throughout. And I'm going to be using this mini for my Explore Knit Solstice Advent. This is Dreamscape. So I'm going to be using this as the contrast. And I think it'll work out really well. Yeah. And yes, I am doing a test of the coloring book tea, even though I've not finished my coloring book raglan that I started over a month ago. Um, that's my other whip. I haven't really been, been working on it. So I'm not going to show it to you because not much progress has been made. But hopefully the next time I film, there will be. Um, and I think that is all my current whips. It is. And so now we're going to get to acquisitions. Um, there has been a lot of acquisitions um, this past, I think, like five weeks. Um, just a lot of pre-orders came in. I also just bought a lot of yarn, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just happens sometimes, right? Um, I keep saying I should stop buying yarn, and yet I don't stop. Um, I had this realization the other day that I think this is why I love test knitting. Um, not only is it the thrill of meeting a deadline, but it also forces me to really you know, knit quickly through my stash. Um, I had a rule this year that I would not sign up for a test knit unless I yarn for it in stash. And I have been successful so far. I think these two tests I'm working on right now are test number like seven and eight maybe. Um, and yeah, so far everything has been yarn from stash. I haven't bought any yarn specifically for a test. Um, which is really great, but at the same time I'm thinking to myself, I'm still bringing a lot of yarn in. So yeah. Um, all right, so let's get to it. So first are the... March, April. I think these are the May Club colorways for the Anna Green Gables Club from Woolberry. So here they are. I really love these. So this one is Bosom Friend. It's beautiful, light, very light, semi solid blue. I really love this. I told Bethany I'm going to need a sweater quantity in this. And I love this because Bosom Friend, you know, is definitely referring to Anne and Diana. And I think Diana, in the books, when Anne meets her, Diana wears this, has this blue dress that she always wears. And I think um, this might be the inspiration behind it. But either way, that's what it reminds me of. And then, so this is Scope for Imagination, which is Anne's catchphrase kind of thing, where she always talks about how everything has a scope for imagination. And I think Bethany did a wonderful job kind of capturing the feeling of that phrase in a colorway. Like, look at all these beautiful colors in there. So springy and summery and fanciful. Yeah, that's just, it's just beautiful. Uh, my next club was the Georgia O'Keeffe April from the Red Pansy. This is based on the painting Petunia number no. two. This is also so beautiful. I love it when she does like these gray, dark gray, black speckles. I don't know why. I just, I just love it so much. I think because it's so, um, not unexpected, but it's not the usual choice. And I kind of love the modern edge that it brings. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I also got my Woolberry Collective yarn, and this is Caterpillar in the Garden, and this was named by Bethany's son, Theo, and I got it on the Tweed DK base, so this beautiful light sagey green. It's beautiful. I love it. I did get a sweater quantity of these. I'm just showing you two because otherwise I'd have a million skeins of yarn sitting on my table here. Um, but yeah. Oh, that just fell. Oh, well. <laughs> I also got some more J'adore fibers. My good friend, Shannon. So first, I did get a sweater quantity of Stormy on her Luminous DK. And this Luminous DK is 70% merino, 30% silk. And just look at that glow. It is so soft. That glow and that sheen. Ugh, I love it. This this dark navy blue is just so perfect. And then she was really sweet, and she threw in this skein of mint condition. She showed me... So, 
the benefit of being really good friends with friends who are indie dyers is that sometimes they will show you what they are working on to get your opinion before they release it to the public. And so she'd show me this mint condition she had made and oh my goodness, isn't it perfect? It's such a perfect mint. So um, I asked her to include a skein of it in my order that I made with Stormy. And so this is on also on Luminous Decay and I'm thinking I'm gonna use these together and use the mint as a contrast for a colorwork sweater. But yeah, ugh, the silk is so luxurious feeling. It is so soft. Woo. Okay, and then I also got some cinema roll. And this is on her DK base. And I got this for my daughter to make a garment for her next year. Cause this is totally colors up her alley. Yeah. Let's see. I also, so Traveling Yarn had a sale a couple weeks ago. I think it was like their spring sale. So I couldn't resist. I've been wanting to try Traveling Yarn for a while, I think. So their Instagram is Traveling Yarn, but then the Yarn Elbow says Less Traveled Yarn, so whichever it is. Um, so I got sweater quantities of both of these. So this is Frida, also a minty, icy blue-green. And this is on 90% merino, 10% silk. This is fingering weight. Again, that silk makes it so glowy and so luxurious feeling. And then I also got a sweater quantity of Devil's Bridge on DK. Yeah, look at that. That's just gorgeous. Um, and I also got a new base to try. So this is from Woolberry also. And this is Fjord on her Berry Rambouillet base. Rambouillet. Rambouillet? Rambouillet? I don't know. Um, so it's 100% non-superwash US Rambouillet. Rambouillet, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, um, which is a different breed of sheep. And um, if you know me, I usually tend to stick to merino because a lot of other things make me itch. Like I've discovered that BFL makes me itch, but Bethany told me that the Rambouillet was really, really soft. So I took a leap and tried it. I got four skeins of these and it is really soft. And just like, look, look at that twist on there. It is so, I, I, kind of, I love that. It's so bouncy and just like, yeah, that twist is great. So this is 200 yards, so this is worsted weight. Um, yeah, but it is very soft. Like I can refill, it is next to skin soft, but it's very, um, I don't know what the word is. It's definitely just not, it's not rustic. It looks rustic, but it doesn't feel rustic, if that makes sense. Yeah, give you a closer look at the, the definition, yeah. Um, I'm definitely going all over the place with these, but that's okay. Um, because I also got, I forgot that I got this from Jador Fibers. This is Pupoli. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, this beautiful neutral. Ugh, so good. So good. So good. So good. Yeah. Okay. And then we are almost done. I promise. <laughs> I am also suspecting I might have forgotten some yarn in this too. So yeah. Uh, okay, so lastly, yesterday I got a bunch of yarn from House of Ala Mode. And she recently had an update for her micro speckled collection. And I jumped on that so fast. So fast. So first I got um, a sweater quantity of, the, of Into the Woods on fingering. Look at those little micro speckles. They are so good. Look at that. Oh. This is Into the Woods. And then I also got, here we go, Couture. Also on a fingering weight. Ugh. This like taupey base with these light micro speckles of gold and black and blue and gray. Ugh. It is so good. It is so good. And then I also got Baby Yoda on DK. And I appear to have a theme again because I am apparently really into the minty blues these days. I'm gonna show you kind of all these minty blue greens, I guess. That's what you're saying. <laughs> 
But look, they are all different, you know? None of them are identical. They are all different. Yeah. I like what I like, right? Okay, so that's it for yarn acquisitions. I did get some other things. So I showed you these sheep stitch markers I got from Denim and Rain. I also got the black set that she had. Yeah, so these, it's like this, here, let me try to hold it so. It's like this black sheep. And then the stitch markers are also a black undertone with gold foil and flower petals. So good. And then I also got some stitch markers from um, Nip Boop, Yura. So this is the Gojujang set. So pretty. And then I also, so when I was watching Stephanie of Edible Thoughts Makes, her um, podcast, an episode or two ago, she'd mentioned um, that she always knits her socks, um, two at a time, but like in tandem on their own needles next to each other. And that she bought extra cables so that she has like the same cable length for all of them. And that got me thinking, maybe I should do that. Um, because when I was working on my striped cozy classic, I actually was knitting the sleeves in tandem. Um, I had each of them on their own little circulars and I was knitting them in tandem because I wanted to make the most use of my yarn. So I wanted to make sure the stripes were even on both sides, but I didn't want to weigh things again. Um, so what I did was I knit like several rows on one sleeve, then I knit the same amount of rows on the other sleeve and then kind of go back and forth like that. Um, but when I was doing that, one of the, um, cables was shorter because I only have three sizes with my shorties, um, set. And it was a little uncomfortable to knit one of the sleeves on a shorter cable. And so then I was like, duh, why don't I just buy extras too? And so what I did was I went online and I bought um, the, let's see. So I bought, got these. So I couldn't find it where I could buy only the cables. So then I just bought a set with extra tips because at the same time I was like, you know what? There are certain sizes where I do use the tips way more often. And sometimes I do wish I had more of those tips. So I got US 7 tips here. You can see they have the needles and then they come in two in, is it two and three inch? Yeah, two inches and three inch tips. And the cable lengths are five inches and six inches. So you can make a nine inch circ, a 10 inch circ, um, 11 inch, and I think they're saying, yeah, 11 inch or 12 inch circ, yeah. Yeah, two cable lengths, two tip lengths. Um, and then I did the same thing for size one, thinking that, you know, I will get back to knitting socks at some point soon. Um, so yeah, and so that leads me to the wellness tip for this episode. I'm pretty sure I have gone over everything I've gotten. Um, so my wellness tip for you this episode is that what you might find, so some people find that when they're knitting with shorter circulars, that it can be rough on their hands. And I'm here to offer a solution. So this may work, may or may not work if you knit continental where you pick. But for any of my fellow English knitters out there who throw their yarn and hold their yarn in their right hand, this will probably work for you. So what I do is if I am knitting on a short circular, and so you can see that these shorties, they have two different tip lengths, right? But sometimes, sorry, I can't get it to focus. Sometimes when you're knitting on a sleeve, you get to a circumference where maybe you can't use the two longer tips anymore because you just don't have enough stitches to go all the way around. Um, and so then you have to switch to the shorter ones. But sometimes you might find that knitting with these really short ones is just really tiring on your hands. It is for me, okay? So what I have found that I will do is that I will instead use one of each. So I will put the shorter tip on the left side and the longer tip on the right side. And that is because for me, I knit, I tension my arm in my right hand, I hold in my right hand. And having the longer tip length means that more of your fingers can rest on there as you're knitting. Whereas with the shorter tip length, you know, your fingers out here are not resting on anything solid necessarily, you know, nothing like firm, um, which can cause your hand to feel tired. But for me, I have found that putting a longer tip on the right hand side means that my hands actually don't get so tired because then they're not trying to grip something that's not there, if that makes sense. Um, I kind of wish I had something, I had a sleeve 
on so I could show you what I mean. But feel free to try that out and let me know what you think. You can also switch it up. Like if you're a continental knitter, maybe it might work the other way for you where you have the longer tip on the left-hand side and the shorter one on the right-hand side. Um, but either way, give that a try. Um, you know, these you can mix and match these tips like this. Um, and you can do that to help ease any cramping, fatigue, tiredness in your hands too. So that's my tip and that is my episode. And this is... Well, I'm looking at the time right now and it's like 30 something minutes. So it's actually not too long. I think I just try to like stay and hold through everything. Um, yeah. But I hope you enjoyed seeing all my FOs, all my whips, all my yarn. I felt like I had a lot of everything to share. Um, but hopefully it will not be a whole nother month before the next time I podcast. But if you have stuck around towards through the end, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing everything. Um, again, links to everything will be below as well as with the classes that I am teaching with Vogue Knitting Live and the Making app. And I hope that you will check those out and maybe I'll see you there. Um, until next time, happy knitting.